Welcome to DX Sudoku training video number 105. In this video, two puzzle solving techniques will be demonstrated. The first is known as forcing chains, and the second is known as a forcing net. There are two prerequisite videos for this video. The first is DX Sudoku video number 103 titled Improved Bowman's Puzzle Solving Technique. And the second is DX Sudoku video number 87 titled Cell Phone by Value Elimination. Chaining techniques are extremely powerful and can be used to solve every level of Sudoku puzzles. The X-Wing puzzle solving technique is the most commonly used chaining sequence. All chaining sequences have the same set of components, as in every chaining sequence begins with a single premise. And the sequence itself is composed of nodes and links between nodes. A link is a relationship between two nodes. There are different types of nodes. Most of the time, a link is a relationship between two candidates in two different cells. A link can also occur between two different candidates in the same cell. The two most common relationships are a weak and strong links. A weak link is a relationship between two candidates where if one candidate is off or false, the other candidate is on or true. A strong link is a relationship between two candidates where if one candidate is on or true, then the other candidate must be off or false. There are three types of nodes in a chaining sequence. The first and most common type of node is a single candidate within a single cell. The second type of node is a group of candidates in different cells acting like a single node in a relationship. The third type of node is a set of candidates in different cells forming a pattern. The pattern is then used as a node in a relationship, which is usually used as a strong link to eliminate other candidates. The most common pattern nodes I've used in chaining sequences are naked pair, naked triple, X-wing, skyscraper, and the X-chain. See DX Sudoku video number 103 for examples of using pattern nodes in chaining sequences. There are three possible results for our chaining sequences. The first is our chaining sequence solves the puzzle. And second, our chaining sequence results in a contradiction. And third, our chaining sequence stalls. A stalled chaining sequence means there are no more weak or strong links to continue the sequence. There are four types of contradictions that can occur when building out our chaining sequence. The first type is two of the same number within the same house. And the second type is when one of the numbers one through nine is missing from a house. The third type is when a cell is empty or all the candidates have been removed by strong links in the chaining sequence. And the fourth type is when the remaining candidates within the cells form a uniqueness pattern. When a chaining sequence stalls, it can be extended by using a second assumption and then continuing the chaining sequence. See DX Sudoku video number 103 for an example of how to extend a stalled chaining sequence. In this video, the demonstrations will be done using the cell phone style of doing chaining sequences. For a tutorial on doing cell phone style chaining sequences, watch DX Sudoku video number 87. There are two types of assumptions we can use when creating our chaining sequences. The first type is when we assume a cell is not set to a particular candidate. And the second type is when we assume a particular candidate is the value of a cell. Up to this point, all my previous videos on chaining were all using the first type of chaining sequence assumption of a cell not equal to a candidate. In this video, both demonstrations will use the second type of assumption where we assume a particular candidate is the value of a cell. A forcing chain is a generic term for any chaining sequence that results in something being done in solving a puzzle. The first result of a forcing chain is a cell gets set to a particular value. And the second result is a particular candidate is removed from a cell. A candidate being removed from a cell will be done in the first demonstration. Every Bowman's bingo chaining sequence is a forcing chain. A forcing net is when two or more forcing chains are used to force a result in solving the puzzle. The first result of a forcing net is a cell gets set to a value, which will be demonstrated in this video's second demonstration. And the second result of a forcing net is to remove a candidate or candidates from a puzzle. An X-wing is a forcing net having eight forcing chains. Each X-wing corner cell has one forcing chain for when the candidate is off or false, and a second forcing chain for when the candidate is on or true. 
all eight forcing chains of the X-Wing allow us to logically conclude we can remove certain candidates from the puzzle. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. All the easy stuff has been done, and the result is we currently have four values set. As you can see, this puzzle has some meat to it, with an Hudoku rating of 10,378. Hudoku solver required three W wings, two hidden rectangles, one five cell Sudika, six AICs, two almost locked sets, and 11 forcing chains to solve this puzzle. With the way I do forcing chains, I will pretty much solve this puzzle with just two forcing chains. I've updated the algorithm notes with its first entry. If you plan to work with bi-value cells, then use the improved Bowman's Bingo puzzle solving technique. If you are working with cells having three or more candidates, then use forcing chains or forcing nets. The first step in doing a forcing chain is to pick a starting cell and starting candidate for our chaining sequence. The way we pick a starting candidate will be based on two criteria. I've updated the algorithm notes for the first selection criteria. When doing a forcing chain, we are going to assume a cell has been set to a certain value. We are looking for a candidate that if it were set would result in a high number of values being set in the first and second set of strong and weak links in our chaining sequence. Take a closer look at cell 6,5. If we assume cell 6,5 has been set to a value of 2, as indicated by its green color, then as you can see, we get a total of 7 cells set in the first and second round of strong and weak links. We need an assumption that we'll have a chaining sequence that doesn't immediately stall. Having seven cells set is a pretty good indicator our chaining sequence will not stall. So assuming cell 6,5 having a value of 2 meets our first criteria. Our second criteria is we want a starting candidate that has a good result if our chaining sequence ends in a contradiction. When we assume 6,5 is equal to 2, if a contradiction occurs, then we will remove the 2 candidate from cell 6,5. This results in five cells being set in the first and second round of weak and strong links after the two candidate is removed. Having five cells set as a result of our chaining sequence ending in a contradiction is a good number. So choosing cell 6,5 equal to 2 as our chaining sequence assumption meets our second criteria. Now I could have methodically checked every candidate in every cell having two or more candidates and find the best candidate for the two criteria. But all I did to find 6,5 equal to 2 as the assumption was visually look around until I found one that had plus 5 values set for both criteria. It did not take long to find what I was looking for. We choose cell 6,5 equal to 2 to be the assumption of our chaining sequence. I'm going to go off and do the chaining sequence. I'll be right back. I'm back. Our chaining sequence ended in a contradiction. We have two threes in the house making up column five. I've updated our algorithm notes on what to do when we get a contradiction. I've reset the puzzle. As you can see, when we remove the two candidate from cell six comma five, it opens up a hidden single for the two candidate in cell five comma six. The two candidate is removed from cell 6, 5, and we set cell 5, 6 to have a value of 2. I have Hudoku recalculate the difficulty score at this point in the puzzle. By just setting cell 5, 6 to have a value of 2, we've had a whopping drop in difficulty score from over 10,000 to under 1,400. There's still a little meat on this puzzle, so we will do a second forcing net. First, we clear off the easy stuff before we look for a second starting candidate. After searching around, I find the 8 candidate in cell 2, 8 meets both criteria. Cell 2, 8 equal to 8 causes 8 cells to be set in the first two rounds of the chaining sequence. And cell 2, 8 not equal to 8 causes 8 cells to be set in the first two rounds of the chaining sequence. This is a really good candidate to use in our chaining sequence. I'll be right back. I'm back. Our chaining sequence ends with a contradiction by having two fours in the house making up block eight. I've reset the puzzle. 
A contradiction means we need to remove the 8 candidate from cell 4, 8. This will open up a hidden single with the 8 candidate in cell 5, 7. I remove the 8 candidate from cell 4, 8, and I set 8 as the value of cell 5, 7. And I have Hadoku recalculate the difficulty of the puzzle from this point. Our difficulty goes from 1,396 to an easy puzzle having a difficulty score of 238. All that's left is naked and hidden singles. As demonstrated, the forcing chain puzzle solving technique is extremely powerful in solving the most difficult puzzles. I've updated our algorithm notes on what to do if our chaining sequence stalls or solves the puzzle. Next, I will demonstrate the forcing net puzzle solving technique. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. As you can see, our puzzle has some meat to it. All the easy stuff has been done, and we have a total of 10 cells already set. When I use forcing nets, I like to do this technique with houses having three cells of the same candidate, also known as trilocation cells. For bi-value cells or bi-location cells, use Bowman's net as described in DX Sudoku video number 104. You can use forcing nets with four or more candidates, but the chaining sequences become a lot of work. First, we need to choose a starting candidate and a set of three cells in a house. We want to find three candidates having lots of cells set in the first two rounds of the chaining sequence. All the cells having a possible one candidate are now highlighted. I looked at the three one cells in block one, but it did not meet the selection criteria. I looked at the three one cells in block nine, but it also did not meet the selection criteria. All the two cells are now highlighted. I looked at the two cells in block four, but it did not meet the selection criteria. All the three cells are now highlighted, but there's nothing to check. All the four cells are now highlighted. I tried doing a forcing net with the fours in block five, but the assumption four comma six equal to four stalled too quickly to yield any good results. All the five cells are now highlighted. I looked at the five cells in block one, but it did not meet the selection criteria. However, let's take a closer look at the five cells in block eight. Here are the three assumptions we will be making in our three chaining sequences. Assuming seven comma six equals five results in seven cells being set in the first two rounds of the chaining sequence. Assuming eight comma five equals five results in eight cells being set in the first two rounds of the chaining sequence. Assuming 9 comma 5 equals 5 results in 9 cells being set in the first two rounds of the chaining sequence. So the 5s in block 8 strongly meet our selection criteria. I've updated the algorithm notes on what to do next. For each of the three assumptions, we will do a chaining sequence. We begin by doing a chaining sequence for when cell 7 comma 6 equals 5. I'll be right back. Our chaining sequence solves the puzzle. As stated in the algorithm, I take a screenshot to record all the values set in each cell. The second chaining sequence starts with assuming 8 comma 5 equals 5. I'll be right back. I'm back. Our second chaining sequence ends with a contradiction. Don't worry about contradictions and having two cells with the same number in the same house. These duplicate values will get flushed out later in the process. Just as before, we make a screenshot for saving our second chaining sequence results. Our third chaining sequence starts with assuming 9 comma 5 equals 5. I'll be right back. I'm back. Our third chaining sequence ends with a contradiction. Just as before, we make a screenshot for saving our third chaining sequence results. I've updated the algorithm notes on what to do next. All three screenshots are now being shown side by side. First, we are going to compare the first chaining sequence results with the second chaining sequence results. There are 10 cells that are set to the same value with the first and second chaining sequence. Next, we compare the same cells set in the first and second chaining sequence with the third chaining sequence. The third chaining sequence screenshot now has all the cells highlighted that were set to the same value by all three chaining sequences. I've updated our notes with the list of five cells set to the same value by all three chaining sequences. The result of all three chaining sequences is these five cells are set to the same value. 
Let's consider the logic for how the forcing net works. One of our chaining sequences must be the correct one. So if a cell is set to the same value in all three chaining sequences, then that must be the correct value of the cell. When we use a forcing net to set a cell to a certain value, we say the forcing net proved the verity of the cell. In this example, there's a second additional forcing net. The second and third chaining sequences create a forcing net proving the verity of cell 7, 6 must be set to 5. I've set all six cells to the values we have determined. I have Hadoku recalculate the difficulty of the puzzle from this point. The two forcing nets in this demonstration reduce the puzzle's difficulty level by a whopping 10,000 points. Our difficulty score went from 10,184 to an easy puzzle of 180. All that is left is naked and hidden singles. Because I've been so successful in using forcing chains and forcing nets, next I will give you an updated puzzle solving algorithm for extreme puzzles. Here's my puzzle solving algorithm for extreme puzzles, having an Hodoka rating greater than 1,500 but less than 10,000. And here's my puzzle solving algorithm for ultra extreme puzzles having an Hadoku rating greater than 10,000. This completes DX Hadoku training video number 105. Please support my channel by buying one of my books. It makes a great gift for someone who is just starting out playing Sudoku.